If we are to believe the Bible, if we are to believe the scriptures, if we are to believe the book of Enoch, nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about a wobbling, spinning, flying round object. It never says anything of the sort. In fact, it always talks about a foundational structure that is, um, well, it's everything different than what NASA says, right? We are led to believe the sun, uh, it comes up in the east, goes down in the west. And from reading Enoch, that may actually be true. But nothing like we ever thought. Let's run through this real quick. The Sephir of the Revolutions of Luminaries of Heaven, according to their respective classes, their respective powers, their respective periods, their respective names, the places where they commence, their progress, and their respective months, which Uriel, the holy angel, who was with me, explained to me. He who conducted them, the whole account of them, according to every year of the world forever, until a new work shall be effected, which will be eternal. This is the first law of the luminaries. The sun and the light arrive at the gates of heaven, which are on the east and on the west of it, at the western gates of heaven. I beheld the gates whence the sun goes forth, and the gates where the sun sets. Okay, so guys, it's, there's a picture right there of something completely different than what we are told to believe. We are told to believe that the sun is revol we're revolving around the sun as, a, as we're spinning as, as well. But this clearly says there are six gates that the sun commences from. And that would conduct the seasons. Um, in which gate also the moon rises and sets and the conductors of the stars among those who precede them, six at the rising and six at the setting of the sun. All these respectively, one after another, are on a level and numerous windows are on the right and on the left sides of those gates. Wow, okay, so they're all on different levels. There's numerous windows on the right and the left side of those gates. First proceeds forth that great luminary, which is called the sun, the orb of which is as the orb of heaven, the whole of it being replete and splendid and flaming fire. Okay. Its chariot, where it ascends, the wind blows. The sun sets in heaven and returning by the north to proceed towards the east is conducted so as to enter by that gate and illuminate the face of heaven. Okay. In the same manner, it goes forth in the first month by the great gate. It goes forth through the fourth of those six gates, which are the rising of the sun. So all of a sudden, we see that the sun leaves different gates and goes into different gates. And in the fourth gate, from which the sun rises in the first month, there are 12 open windows from which issues out a flame when they are opened in their proper periods. Wow, okay, so we have windows next to the gates and sometimes the windows are open. When the sun rises in heaven, it goes forth through this fourth gate 30 days and by the fourth gate in the west of heaven on a level with it descends. Okay, so at the uh, beginning, we're leaving the fourth gate and we enter into the fourth gate on the west side. During that period, the day is lengthened from the day and the night curtailed from the night for 30 days. And then the day is longer by two parts than the night. The day is precisely 10 parts and the night is eight. Hmm. The sun goes forth through this fourth gate and sets in it and turns to the fifth gate during 30 days, after which it proceeds from and sets in the fifth gate. So it says we're still arriving or we're coming out of the fourth gate, but for 30 days we went into one gate and then for 30 days we're, we're going into a different gate. And these gates are different, um, they're different lengths. They're, they're ones further and ones closer. So this is what is determining our seasons is by how the sun goes to which gate it goes out and it goes in. Verse 17. The sun now returns to the east, entering into the sixth gate and rising and setting in the sixth gate 31 days on account of its signs. Okay, so here we go again. There's another gate. So the sun will... Well, it's entering through the sixth gate and rising and setting in the sixth gate. So now we're into, we, we're out of fourth gate, we're out of fifth gate, we're into sixth gate. At that period, the day is longer than the night, being twice the night and become 12 parts. But the night is shortened and becomes six parts. Then the sun rises up that the day may be shortened and the night lengthened. And the sun returns towards the east, entering into the sixth gate, 
where it rises and sets for 30 days. So it's now it's pulling in and out of the sixth gate, both entering and exiting. When that period is completed, the day becomes shortened precisely one part, so that it is 11 parts, while the night is seven parts. So now we have way longer days, much shorter nights, right? And all we have in terms of NASA, or the, the liars that have, have indoctrinated all of us, is that, uh, you know, it's, it, th these are the seasons because we're going around the sun differently or, or something of the sort. It seems far more probable on a non-spinning ball that we would have gates to give us our sun. Verse 24. Then the sun goes from the fifth gate as it sets in the fifth gate of the west and rises in the fourth gate for 31 days on account of its signs setting in the west. At the period, the day is made equal with the night. And being equal with it, the night becomes nine parts. And the day, nine parts. So when it goes, uh, what is that, the fifth and the sixth? Fifth gate rises on the fourth gate. So no, that's the fifth. So that's the fourth gate um, to the fifth gate. So between these different gates, it's all different times. Then the sun goes from the gate, from that gate, as it sets in the west, and returning to the east, proceeds by the third gate, for 30 days and setting in the west at the third gate. Okay, there we go. At that period, the night is lengthened from the day during 30 mornings and the day is curtailed from the day during 30 days, the night being 10 parts precisely and the day being eight parts. So our days are longer, nights are shorter. The sun now goes from the third gate as it sets in the third gate in the west, but returning to the east, it proceeds by the second gate of the east for 30 days. In like manner, also it sets in the second gate in the west of heaven. At that period, the night is 11 parts and the day is 7 parts. Way longer nights, way short days. Then the sun goes, down, goes at that time from the second gate as it sets in the second gate in the west, but returns to the east, proceeding by the first gate for 31 days and sets in the west in the first gate. At that period, the night is lengthened as much again as the day. It is 12 parts precisely, while the day is 6 parts. The sun has completed its beginnings, and a second time goes around goes round from these beginnings. Into that gate it enters for 30 days, and sets in the west in the opposite part. At that period, the night is contracted in its length, a fourth part. That is, one portion, and becomes 11 parts. The day is 7 parts. Then the sun returns, and enters into the second gate of the east. It returns by these beginnings 30 days rising and setting. At that period, the night is contracted in its length. It becomes 10 parts and the day 8 parts. Then the sun goes from that second gate and sets in the west, but returns to the east and rises in the east in the third gate, 31 days setting in the west of heaven. At that period, the night becomes shortened. It is 9 parts, and the night is equal with the day. The year is precisely 364 days. The lengthening of the day and night and the contraction of the day and night are made to differ from each other by progress of the sun. By means of this progress, the day is daily lengthened and the night is greatly shortened. This is the law and progress of the sun and is turning when it turns back, turning during 60 days and going forth. This is the great everlasting luminary that which he names the sun forever and ever. This also is that which goes forth a great luminary which is named after his peculiar kind as Elohim commanded. And thus it goes out in and out, neither slacking nor resting, but running on its chariot by day and by night. Its light is seven times brighter than that of the moon, but the dimensions are both equal. Wow. So we have something we've never ever, you know, in school, we hear that uh, the sun is just an enormous size, whereas the moon is, is really small. It's just a, a little little planet on this. But yet... We are told right here the sun and the moon are the exact same size. How can that be? Well, it's, it's precisely precision, right? And so the dimensions are both equal of the sun and moon, but the light of the sun is seven times brighter than that of the moon, which, yeah, you could definitely see that. I mean, you can see in, when it's full moon, you can still see at night, but seven times, you would think the sun is probably more than seven times brighter because it's just a flaming ball, but... Um, I believe this. I believe I believe what I read here. So as we see the deception that has been laid before us all our lives, literally since we've been indoctrinated since a child, right? We are we're thousands of years beyond our Messiah. We are 
thousands of years beyond creation. Everything that we know has been um, has been given to us by those who won the wars. We don't even know the real history. Most people didn't even know there was a president prior to George Washington in the United States. Most people didn't even know he was black before that because history has all been uh, is taken from us. Yeah, look it up. Look it up, guys. There's there's many presidents before George Washington. Um, not quite presidents, but they were the leaders of the free country, and there was a black guy in there as well. Nobody knows this stuff. You no, know, everybody thinks of the the. I mean, it's just I'm not I'm not going to go there. It's just we are in a age of deception with this. Today is a beautiful Shabbat day. Today is a day our Creator has built for Him, for you, for the rest of for the resting of his entire creations. So I hope you're using this. I hope you guys are reading your Bibles. I hope you guys are finding the truth. And I hope you guys can find a little bit of truth out of the readings that I do for you guys. Much love. Have a good day.